The Last Onion, a screenplay by Hannah and Micah. Interior, Mrs. Hazanakaman's apartment, afternoon. An onion is being chopped into small chunks by an unseen woman. Pull back to reveal Mrs. Hazanakerman, who is preparing a traditional Yom Kippur breakfast. She's chopping the onion with bread in her mouth to avoid tearing up. The knife slices in time with cheery bim, cheery bum. She hums a wall. When the first onion is chopped, she puts the chopped bits into the food processor. She reaches for the next one and continues chopping to the rhythm. She dumps the pieces into the food processor. She reaches for a third onion in the groove, but grabs nothing. Confused, she looks to see that there aren't any onions left in the bag. Oh, Gavalt, I could have sworn I had enough. She checks the family recipe book, which looks like it's been around since the 1800s. She makes sure the recipe calls for three onions before scoffing. <laughs> a quick montage flashes on screen, like a suiting up montage in a superhero movie, but it's Mrs. Kazanakman putting on chunky jewelry and orthopedic shoes, grabbing her cane and car keys before heading down to her car via elevator and driving off. <laughs> Exterior, Wegman's parking lot. The camera focuses on the Wegman sign as the car rolls into frame. We hear a car door open, grunts of complaint, <clears throat> and a door slam as Miss Kazanakman gets Ooh. out of her car and walks towards the doors of uh. Wegmans. Interior, Wegmans. Mrs. Kazanakman wipes down the handle of a basket and heads inside. She wanders the aisles looking for anything she might need besides an onion as a cheesy pop song plays through muffled supermarket speakers. She puts a box of crackers into her basket, just in case. Suddenly, Devin enters the frame. Are you finding everything all right, ma'am? Oh, actually, I thank you. That's great. Let me know if I can find anything for you. Devin walks away, mildly amused with himself for doing his job. Mrs. Kazanakaman continues down the cracker aisle before hearing a familiar voice. Oh my goodness, Mrs. Kazanakaman! Mrs. Kazanakaman turns around to come face to face with Mrs. Silverblum, rival, younger, more hip Jewish grandmother, an avid one-upper. The following conversation is dripping with passive aggression, and at any moment, they could punch each other if they were only faster and less plagued by arthritis. Oh, hello, Mrs. Silverblum! How's the grandchild? Little Rachel is going on eight now? Yes, she's absolutely wonderful! I'm verklempt! Did you hear she was recently declared class president of the third grade? Wow, that's amazing! My little Anna was too busy to run because she's starring in her school's production of Little Orphan Annie. That's nice! They start walking together. The other day, Anna told me all about the wonderful time she had taking publicity pictures for the local newspaper, not to mention that she's involved with the 4-H club and raising baby ponies. Oh, yes. I heard she and her mother are doing that. Rachel is helping foster five dogs and three cats all by herself. Well, where does she find the time for that? Isn't she still playing on that sports team? I certainly hope she doesn't put an eye out. One of my 11 grandchildren, Bella, we call her Bagel, reads and cooks for the blind, so she's not risking that. Yes, my Rachel is both the goalie and the forward. She's at a scribbage right now. I'm sure she'll do fine. My grandson, Brandon, is going to the Olympics next year for gymnastics. We're so proud of him. And you should be. The Olympics are great. My daughter brought home gold in three categories in 1984. Oh, yeah, my daughter, whose husband is the rabbi, works as both a lawyer and an emergency room nurse. Remember how last year she saved a whole class of preschoolers and their teachers from a gas leak in their school? Well, she successfully sued the gas company and managed to get them to pay for each of those precious children's college tuitions. Well, with all that there is to be proud of, why are you at Wegmans? Shouldn't you be at home cooking your Yom Kippur breakfast? Oh, I'm just missing an onion for my chopped liver. I make it every year and it's always delicious. You know, it's my great-grandmother's own recipe. Oh, that's nice. I also need an onion. I just need a little something extra for my kreplach. My recipe not, might not be as old, but I don't doubt it's as good, if not better, than your chopped liver. Both women find themselves in the middle of the produce section. At the same time, they realize there's only one onion left. If the Kill Bill sirens weren't copyrighted, they'd be sounding right now. Well, if you need it for your recipe, I'll let you have it. You probably need more flavor anyway. No, no, I wouldn't want to break your traditional recipe. If you really need another onion, I won't stand in your way. 
The frame ratio narrows over each woman's eyes like an old western movie. As if they were slugs on a racetrack, they start lunging towards the shelf. Mrs. Kozanakaman gets there first. Ha! Oi! Her victory is cut short when she sees Mrs. Silverblum's cart rolling her way speedily. Thinking fast, she uses her basket to deflect the cart by getting down on a knee and holding it like a shield. Oh, 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 that's my bad knee. Okay, give me a moment. Will hey, hey! Mrs. Silverblum has climbed onto the avocado display and is preparing to body slam her like a WWE star. She jumps as Mrs. Hazenachman rolls to the side last minute. Mrs. Silverblum thumbs to the ground and Mrs. Hazenachman reaches for her cane. She picks it up and starts whacking Mrs. Silverblum with it. I told you to take it! Your recipe needs it! No, you need it more! I'm just trying to get it for you! Mrs. Silverblum grabs the end of a cane and yanks it out of Mrs. Hazenachman's hands, turning it around and sweeping Mrs. Hazenachman's legs, Whoa. knocking her to the ground. Both women on the ground continue to attempt to fight, pulling jewelry and hair in a desperate attempt to force the other to admit that they need the onion more. Some patrons try to find management, others stand in awe or film on their phones. Nobody directly helps. Until... Ma'ams! Ma'ams, please! Ma'ams! Please stop! Ma'ams! Ma'ams, I'm gonna have to ask you to leave! Ma'ams! Ma'ams, what are you fighting over? She needs an onion! I'll see if we have any in the back. In one long take, Devin goes to the back, leaving the two women to keep trying to fight. Although it's clear, they're getting more and more tired. <sighs> After about 45 seconds, Devin comes back with a bag of onions and dumps them onto the shelf. There. Both women stop immediately. There. Now please, ma'am, stop fighting and leave the store. Both women get up, eyeing the other with a look only a disapproving Ashkenazi grandmother can make. The kind that spoils milk if entered in either grandmother's sightline. Thank you so much! You're such a nice young man! You know, my oldest granddaughter Sarah is single! Here, let me give you her number. Mrs. Hazenachman reaches into her oversized purse and hands Devin a pre-written piece of paper with Sarah's number on it. In the background, Mrs. Silverblum takes an onion and exits the frame. Mrs. Hazenachman turns, grabs an onion, and heads to the self-checkout. Interior, Mrs. Hazenachman's apartment, night. In a perfect bookend, the exact same shot of the hand chopping an onion from the beginning plays to Cheery Bim Cheery Bum, but now Mrs. Hazenachman has a broken nail, a band-aid on her knuckles, and when the camera pulls out, she has a black eye and a busted lip. She adds the onion to the chopped liver mixture, smiles, and turns the food processor on. The end. The end. Yeah. <laughs>